Welcome back to Warfinger News. This week the summer event has been announced. This time being called Operation Heat instead of Operation Summer. Probably because we keep on calling it Operation Suffer. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and if you want to support the channel a bit, hit that join button. You'll get videos a bit early. So this event actually is an old style event, not a crafting event. Which has positives but also many negatives that I feel a lot of people are overlooking. It should be starting on Friday, or the 2nd of August, and end on the 26th of August. This time around there will be 6 reward vehicles, 2 planes, 2 tanks, and 2 boats. And as old school events go, you have to complete 3 tasks to get a 1 mark of distinction for each category of vehicle every 2 days. So to get all of the vehicles, you have to do 9 tasks, getting you 3 marks of distinction in a 2 day period for 20 days. If you wish to proceed after those 20 days, you do get a few more goodies. Another decal of undisclosed design and a skin for the high tier event vehicle of that category. But let's talk about these vehicles precisely. The two tanks, the first one, the low tier one, is a BT-7 with the F-32 cannon, which is the same gun on the KV-1E or the Finnish KV-1B in the German tree. This tank seems very interesting. BT-7s are quite speedy, so having a fast tank with a already penetrating gun could be very fun and bring good meme potential to higher tiers however 84 mm of penetration at max isn't that great compared to some of the German meme tanks the high tier event tank is the AUBL 74 HVG which is a AUBL 74 with APFSDS and HESH and can reach 100 kilometers an hour and like the regular AUBL it has no armor or at least that's what the dev blog said honestly I feel like this is something that probably should go in the regular tech tree as there does seem to be a bit of a gap between 7.3 and 8.0 that this could fill however Gaijin and all the wisdom decided that the skeleton tree that is the Italian tank tree does not need more tanks they need more event tanks. Regardless, I think it will be a pretty good vehicle and probably land somewhere around 7.7. That's honestly where I think it's going to go. It might go up a bit if people mean too hard in it, but speedy with no armor and good penetration typically does well. For planes, the low tier reward is the BF-110C6, which is a BF-110 with a 30mm anti-tank cannon, and the cannon can penetrate 60mm of armor. There was nowhere on the dev blog saying that it was an MK-103. I think I read somewhere there was an MK-101, which is like a beta version of the 103. Besides the 30mm autocannon, it is also armed with some 20mm MGFFs and has a defensive turret in the back, just like every other BF-110. The high tier event plane is something that I'm much more interested in. It is the P-59A Aero Comet, which will be the game's first rank 4 jet, which I don't understand at all. The ranks represent hardly anything, just how far you've gotten in the tree. Like, performance has nothing to do with the ranks. You can see plenty of low tier vehicles that should be higher and some rank 3 vehicles that are on par with rank 2 ones. Regardless, it's armed with 350 cals and a 37mm gun, the same one that's on the Air Cobras, and has some pretty good bomb loads, assuming Wikipedia is correct. However, altogether, I still think it's going to be a kind of trash plane. It really depends on where they put it in the battle rating. I'm feeling maybe 6.0 or lower. As once again, according to Wikipedia, its max speed is 665 kilometers an hour, which is much slower than many props out there. The low tier event boat that you can get is the River Class K246, which is kind of like a British version of the Type M 1943 in the German tree, armed with two 102 mm cannons and a unspecified number of 20 mm Orlikans. It could be a pretty good vehicle if you're grinding through the British tree, especially because the first British destroyer is awful. The high class naval vessel that you can get through this event is the Yodachi, a Japanese destroyer armed with five 127 mm guns. Generally, it's just your typical Japanese destroyer. However, the only reason why I could tell Gaijin added this is because of the memes. In the Japanese television show Kantai Collection, the ship Yodachi is personified as a a young girl who constantly says the word poi. So expect that in chat commonly. I'm guessing the Weep Chopper, yes I said it, was a financial success and Gaijin is continuing to find ways to monetize weeaboos. 
As for the other items you can unlock, there are flame decals, and they didn't show what those are. There also are ammunition 3D decorations, which they didn't explain what are either, but sound pretty cool. Now this being one of the older style events, I actually happen to have videos on how to do these tasks already. However, I think I should rephrase it because the video is a bit outdated. But from my estimation how you should do these tasks, I personally would start with Navy first. If you're not interested in doing Navy, then you would start with tanks. But the naval ones are probably the simplest, and you only actually have to be rank 2 to do them. Of the five possible ones, I would go for make 250,000 damage, capture 10 points, and win 10 battles with 50% activity. Those are the passive ones that you could actually get while trying to get the destroy three enemies with torpedoes and finish in first place. The next set of tasks I would go for are tanks and the ones I would go for are destroy 23 enemies in RB. Don't bother with the 45 in arcade. The queue times are typically the same. The gameplay is also very similar. Capture 15 points because that's just rush the cap point and cap it. Everyone else is going to be doing that already regardless of events and get 10 wins with 70% activity. However I would switch that one out for the get 25 assists if you have a friend to play with. And maybe if you're good you can get the six kills in RB. However, I find that one very unreliable and frustrating to try to pursue. And finally, airplane task, which you want to do last because you can take out aircraft in naval and tanks and do part of these tasks while you're doing the other ones. But for airplane tasks, the ones I would suggest you go for and do these in arcade because arcade has shorter queue times, there's more to shoot at, is destroy 35 enemies, win 10 battles with 60% activity, and drop 10 tons of bombs. Although you could switch one amount if you have a friend to get seven assists. Now I'm pretty sure you can get assists by just shooting ground targets and then your friend bombs them. For lineups for air I would take out the FRU1D, SB2C1C, and both of the P47s that are 3.3 in arcade. And I always like to drop in the XF5F fill up the lineup but the plane is kind of trash. As for tanks, there's a few I like to go with. For one, there's the Japanese lineup of the M24, Chinu 2, Nato, Soki, and some 3.7 or 3.3 aircraft. Maybe a Zero. This one I have a Ki-49 in the lineup. But if you're not very far in the Japanese tree, there's also some good German lineups. I like to go with a 4.0 one with the German Churchill, the Whirlwind, the Panzer 4G, and at least one aircraft. Normally, in this 4.0 lineup, I would have the Flak Bus, but that thing is only rank 2, so it's not able to be done for this event. So you could have the BF-109 F4, or have the Panzer IV J, but the J is kind of trash. As for naval lineups, I can't really say, as there hasn't been many naval events that I've actually taken part in, but typically you like to get as low as possible in these events, so you can seal club more often. It's easier to do them that way and you only need to be ranked two in naval to do the naval stuff something that's annoyed me a bit about this event is that it's one of these old style events a lot of people were praising gaijin that they brought this back instead of the stupid crafting event which i understand the crafting events were terrible but that doesn't make these types of events better they're also garbage especially when it requires you to rely on the team to win while also having the correct amount of battle activity you can't rely on the team to do anything because it's a bunch of randoms that you got to put into a game with and battle activity is complete bs i have no idea how they calculate that stuff nor has gaijin really ever came out given a direct answer or this is how it's calculated I think the rule of thumb is it depends on how much time you spent within the view of an enemy. But that's just my assumption. I also love that they brought back assists because assists are not broken at all. The issue with the crafting event is that you had to do them in a small period of time. But the actual function of them worked fine. You just played the game, got parts, put things together. Had for the last crafting event you gotten 20 days instead of 10, I guarantee you it would have been a whole lot less horrible. In other news that is not around the event, there was a 900 square kilometer naval event which was just battling in the English channel on the Baloney Sumar map which was then cancelled shortly after for technical reasons apparently. Personally I like the directions it's taking however just battling in the open ocean would be kind of boring especially a map that large because my god you would have to sail quite far to see an enemy unless they were to say add larger ships. Personally I feel that they need to make naval forces or at least give naval forces an enduring confrontation game mode that would be focused 
focused around capturing islands. And then you could have tanks battle on the islands and have like airports on the islands to take off aircraft. A game mode like this would probably be the only way to actually see all types of vehicles in one match. I actually drew up two maps on this proposed game mode. One with a bunch of islands and one with one big island in the center. Although I did not think of all the kinks and exactly how it would work. But something like this is what I feel like naval forces really needs. If the map was constructed correctly, you could have areas in which small boats were able to battle each other, but you would also have large areas where large naval vessels would have plenty of time and area to do their maneuvering. Also, I think naval forces need to do to not be trash is to get rid of the health bar system. The other news is that Gaijin actually is going to Gamescom. Well, at least they appeared on the Gamescom website to have a stand. And they're stated to have a product being shown that is going to be action slash adventure and simulation. So I'm assuming that's War Thunder. I'm really hoping that we see some enlisted as well because I've been itching to play another first person shooter. But this is one of the situations where it's good to be wrong. And that's just about all the news for this week. If you've liked this video, hit the like button. If you didn't like the video, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to support the channel, be sure to hit the join button. You can get some early uploads. I make these War Thunder Weekly news videos every Sunday. I make written videos the other week and I like to stream on Saturdays. I also have a plan to stream XCOM on Twitch.tv, so be sure to follow me there. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good day. As bonus news, you know that there are ship icons for battlecruisers, battleships, and submarines. Also, there is this list of homing torpedoes that was found, but I think this is actually old. Anyways, it's a very interesting future in what Naval is going to bring. Um, oh, good job. Good job, Yorg.